Welcome to Quantum Mechanics, a powerful framework for understanding the universe. Hi everybody, welcome back for some more Dirac notation. Today we're going to look at the adjoint of an operator in Dirac notation. Okay, I'm going to start with an example, an example that we've already seen, that I believe is going to help us see the structure and actually guess the answer to where we're going. Okay, and it goes like this. Remember when we introduced the notion of an adjoint using the inner product? We then chose a basis and we could look at the matrix representation of the adjoint. Okay, so let's suppose we have an operator. Let's work in the two by two setting and the matrix representation of that operator is given by A, B, C, D. Okay, well, what was the adjoint that, of this matrix? It was a transpose, but we also had to take the complex conjugate of every matrix element, and that's what we have here. Okay, now, let's take that operator A and represent it in Dirac notation, where the basis we're using is an orthonormal, ba orthonormal basis E1, E2, or ket E1, ket E2. And we showed last time that the operator could be represented in this form, where the bra kets, back to back, are actually operators in this case. And we can verify that this operator, 1.56, gives us 1.54 just by computing the matrix elements of this operator from the Dirac notation representation in the way we showed last time. So I urge you to do that. All right. So what would be the representation of the adjoint whose matrix representation is given here in Dirac notation. Well, the matrix representation would be given by this. And we can compute the matrix elements in exactly the same way, and they will give me the matrix elements of A adjoint, which I just scrolled out of the screen. Okay, so how does 156 and 157 relate to each other? Well, if you stare at them, you can see that the structure is you go from 156 to 157 just by reversing the bra cap pairs and taking the complex conjugate of the coefficients multiplying each bra cap pair. So let's look at this in general. That's actually the answer. And that's one of the wonderful things about uh, Dirac notation, bra cap notation. The adjoint of a ket is a bra, and vice versa. Okay, now let's look at this a little more deeply. Let's look at the operator A, defined by the complex number A, bra ket combination, bra psi ket phi. Okay. From what I just said, if we look at the adjoint of A defined in this way, it's going to be A complex conjugate, A bar, bra phi ket, sorry, ket phi bra psi. Okay, so let's try to look at that a little more deeply. So a second look at this. Now this is a very important calculation that we're going to do, especially the first three lines. Once we get those down, then the rest of it is just uh, pretty straightforward uh, manipulations. So we're going to work directly from the adjoint in Dirac notation. So what we want, to f we want to uh, compute the adjoint of A, where A is defined in this way, and show that it's a bar ket phi bra psi. Okay, so what do we do? 
for an arbitrary Brock U cat V, we, we substitute the, we, we insert the adjoint of A in between them. And if we use the definition of the adjoint in direct notation, and this is a little bit different, we can move A to the left, but we take off the adjoint sign. Okay, then we can move to the next line by using a property of the inner product represented in direct notation. Now this is really important that these two lines you understand very carefully. Now I go from the first line to the second line. And then from this from that point on we just substitute in the value of a that we chose or the expression for a that we chose above. And we go through these calculations and we end up with bra u cat phi and in between we have this operator since this is true for every uv we can identify the adjoint of a with and a is defined in this way with a bar cat phi bra psi so we guessed that this was going to be the case by looking at the analogy between the two matrix representations expressed in direct notation, and we proved that it could be it would be the case with this little calculation. Okay. So and you can see that this particular notation is really fantastic for looking at the structure of, of operators represented as Brockett notations. Because let's look at this operator here. This is a clearly a self-adjoint operator. Why? Compute the adjoint. We just reverse the ones and the twos effectively, or reverse bras and cats. We get exactly the same thing. So this calculation is consistent with what I told you earlier, that the adjoint of a bra is a cat, or the adjoint of a cat is a bra. And we can go through this other calculation and ask ourselves, what is the ket associated with the operator A acting on the ket psi? Okay. So let's simplify this by letting ket u equal A ket psi. Plug it into the Dirac inner product. This is essentially the first two lines of the calculation uh, that I just did. So convince yourself of that and then you can easily conclude that the bra associated with the ket A acting on ket psi is bra psi A adjoint on the right. Okay, so there was a lot in these particular calculations, and I don't want to go through the, a, a, a great many of them one after the other. What I want you to do is just to start with the one I started on on the previous page, understand every last calculation to the end, and then I think you'll have it to the point where we can do some really interesting things as the course goes on. Okay, I'm going to stop there for today, and the next topic and the final topic in this chapter is going to be projection operators and the spectral theorem. So, until next time, see you later.